Daily Combat Podcast. I'm here with real estate mogul Dave Stockbridge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get slayed. You're gonna come up with something else. <laughs> <laughs> and world champion Muay Thai kickboxer Carly Gangel. So she's joining us again. We did do an episode before that. You can go back and watch that as well. But she's decided to stick around. Uh, she's teaching a Muay Thai class later tonight. So. We were lucky enough to uh, have her stay and we'll continue chatting. One of the things I wanted to talk about was health in sports and how sports can be presented as you know health and fitness and it's something that you should be doing that's going to increase your longevity and make sure that you're working really hard and discipline and sacrifice and everything's going really well. But under the ground of that, underneath of that, there is so many aspects to many sports where... <laughs> Health is like the last thing on the list and Mm. it's like get the job done no matter what, whether it's weight cutting or whether it's restrictive dieting or fighting opponents that are way stronger or more experienced or... Or even overeating. Exactly. Mm. Yes, exactly. That's right. And there's so many aspects to that. Um, One of the things... So bodybuilding, right? Yeah. Guys, step on stage. Same Mr. Olympia competition. Yep. They are so dehydrated. They look really lean. Yep. Super lean, right? They've been dieting for months leading up to this competition. They do two shows that day, one in the morning, one at night. Yep. The difference between morning and night can be the difference between winning, winning and losing. Mm. Sure. Which is insane. Mm. And it's like, because people look at the way that they look on those photos on that day and they say, oh man, this guy's amazing or it's incredible. Even locally, like people that are in the gym and they train and they diet for a competition and then, you know, they step on stage lean and you know in the shape that they were trying to achieve uh the day after obviously they go back to normal regular eating and they they will increase their body weight back to a normal level but to them it's like they're looking at themselves as that you know five percent uh body fat on stage dehydrated as that's how i should look all the time and it's like it's uh it plays with people's minds i just it frustrates me it's like you, you, that that was a, a specific purpose you were only looking like that for a couple of hours of that day it's not and as i said at the top professional world champion mr olympia level they can't maintain that for a whole day but i think part of the dilemma is that you, there's there, there is a definite difference between health and sport and there is some degree of health that needs to be given up in the pursuit of sport and i think in combat sports in particular there's a lot at risk. You know, you can get knocked out. You can, there can be serious, serious uh, damage as a result of just being there in the ring or in the cage. Um, in bodybuilding, um, you know, that's usually, it, it normally leads to kidney failure or, mm-hmm. or, or uh, heart issues very early on in life. I think ultimately there's, for, for young people, it's really difficult. We were talking about young females mm-hmm. um, earlier and uh, the dilemmas that that just through bad diet selection, uh, really bad um, uh, dehydration and the like, and and the long term effects of that, but no one's thinking about that when they're young and they're they're going for gold. Um, so, what type of learnings are there now in place for young athletes? And and in Mu- Muay Thai, has there been a, a movement towards um, supporting athletes as they? Uh, as they're developing in the younger years to ensure that they don't fall into these traps? Um, I think the biggest thing is around the weight cutting side of things. If people aren't cutting as much weight, then the difference in their body from when they're competing to when they're not competing isn't that big of a difference. So Mm -hmm. obviously the heavier their weight cutting that's, as you said, it's not maintainable. So, mm-hmm. you know, as and I'm talking from perhaps a female perspective in, in my fight career, you know, seeing yourself at weigh-in, it's fantastic to be that lean, mm. not maintainable. But when you then go and live a normal life for two weeks and you put on weight and you actually just get to a healthy weight, mm. you know, in our minds we're like, oh, we're overweight, like this hmm. is terrible, we are, we're too big. Yeah. Um. So, you know, in the later stages of my career where I wasn't cutting as much weight, the difference between my my fight physique and my, you know, regular life physique of just enjoying training and, and still, you know, eating okay, um, you know, it's not that big of a difference. So I think by eliminating those severe weight cuts, you're actually dealing with a lot broader issues as well. Mm. And, and you were mentioning that some of the things that have happened recently in the, uh, in the fight world have been uh, not... Uh, with the weigh-ins uh, uh, in Muay Thai uh, fighters 
wearing wearing clothes and, mm-hmm. and not being not standing there in their bathers or, or just in their shorts, but um, having a t shirt, having a sponsor shirt on, being covered up so that there isn't that um, status that's achieved by being super lean on the scales uh, at, at the weigh in. Yeah, that's right. And as I sort of um, touched on, we were discussing before that there was a bit of a culture around cutting weight um, in the earlier stages of my fight career. So running in a sweatsuit was considered, you know, cool. And the mm. more weight that you were cutting, you know, the more badass you were. Yeah. So it was kind of the same thing, you know, when you get to weigh in and you're standing there in your underwear and your crop top, you know, wearing the bare minimum, yeah. the more ripped and lean and, you know, more dehydrated you look, the, the cooler it, it was. And a lot of people probably don't want to admit that, but that's truly what it was. So mm. by some promotions now, you know, not advertising fighters on the scales, they're just taking a photo in front of the sponsor banners in Muay Thai shorts, in a promotion shirt. At minimum, you know, they'll just wear the Muay Thai shorts, but even still, you know, it's still covering quite a bit. Mm. You know, they are taking that that status away from the weigh-in. Um, and, you know, I've definitely seen a bit of a culture shift since some promoters um, on big shows have been doing that, which is great. Yeah. Well, I mean, young people are always, already very body conscious and very sensitive around that. Um, have you seen any negative knock-ons as a, as a result of this culture of weight cutting? Um, yes, I, I just think, uh, yeah, by, you know, having the UFC and, and young people seeing, seeing how they are at weigh-ins, you know, I think that in mm. itself is, is difficult for young people to comprehend. And, mm. you know, a lot of young people don't understand what has gone into someone being able to look that way. So, and then they look at that and thing. think, why don't I look like that? I'm training hard. That's right. And, I went for know. a 5k run yesterday. Why yeah. don't I look <laughs> like, uh, look like that? So yeah, I think that's, uh, the media has a lot to do with that. Social media can be a bit of a trap for young people these days, especially young athletes for mm. sure. Mm, well, Matt, and you've mentioned uh, that there was a, a female fighter on the scales at the UFC, and she f- literally fainted on the literally scales. Fainted on the scale, and they picked her up, and then she went and weighed in again, and then she got like, "Oh yeah, you've made the weight," and then she stepped off the scale and fainted again on the on the stage, and it was like, oh, "This is this? how can and you?" And it's not good happen? for the sport either, is no. it? You know, it looks terrible for the sport. Absolutely, and you're supposed to be promoting like you know, this is a fun. I mean. Uh, at its at its core, it it's a, a fitness event. You know, you're supposed to be having a good time going to these sorts of things, and you mm. want to be competing because yeah, it's competitive, but uh, and you want to win. But it, at at its core, it must be fun. You must be enjoying mm. it, the process. And if it's to the point where my health is at risk, and I am doing these things that are dehydrating myself, I'm mm. getting kidney problems. I'm getting this problem, uh, mental health issues. It's mm. like, is this, this isn't fun. This isn't a fun aspect to it. And it's that obsession that you can sort of see with, with people that get uh, whatever they're chasing, whatever the goal is, it doesn't have to be sport. But when, when people get obsessed with something and they're willing to sacrifice everything for that one thing and mm. it sort of becomes their life. And uh, you see it where uh, George St. Pierre had to step away. He had to, mm. he was like, I cannot just, I, I can't stop. Like, I'm just thinking of training 24 7 and I, and it's doing my head in because that's, mm. I, I, I can't relax. I can't, I am always pressuring myself. I must go to training. I must do this. I must do that. Uh, and that, that's that discipline that comes into it. Uh, and you want the fighter or somebody who's trying to be successful to have those attributes. But when it becomes that you're a slave to that, uh, obsession that's where it's a problem and it's like uh I, I respect him for being able to do that and saying look i i am having a problem with this even though he was world champion he's like i need to step away um if you want to take the belt from me then that's what we'll do mm. i will retire and i'll you know get myself right and then come back so yeah it's a, it's a double-edged sword because you want to do the right things to get the result but when the right things are unhealthy or dangerous or start taking over your life and affecting it negatively, that's mm. where it's like, Ugh, maybe you need to reevaluate this. Mm. Mm. There has to be a point where you're thinking about the bigger picture. You know, you have to mm. ask yourself realistically, am I going to make it enough to support the rest of my life? If the answer is no, then there needs to be a plan B. So if anything, you've got to work harder to make sure that you've got both avenues. So, you mm. know, I know a few fighters that have given up their, you know, uni degrees or quit their jobs, which is all well and good. I am all for going towards that goal. And some people, you know, you do have to give up everything and make those sacrifices. But, mm. you know, if you're in a sport like, for example, Muay Thai, it's it's never going to be MMA and the UFC. So mm. there's, there's got to be a plan B. 
for, you know, and that includes not destroying your body to the point where it's going to affect you after your career's finished. 